Hello, everyone! The first part of episode 77 is finally here after we waited such a long time for it, although not all of our expectations about it came true. But this episode is still one of the most important in the whole series, because now we can actually understand the biggest parts of its lore and skibbity toilet secrets. We're finally getting to know the true origin of Astro Toilets and how they were made, and now I can finally draw a connection between them and Skibidi Toilets. And it seems to me that Parasites are not actually out of Boom's game, but there is something even more frightening and important about them that I need to tell you in this video. And also, what's up with the other human survivors we met in this episode? And there are actually lots of other people that actually managed to survive. This episode proved it to us, so I'll tell you everything about it. And did you know about the hidden character in this episode that no one else has noticed? Now get your tea and snacks ready and prepare to watch this video to the end where I'll tell you about the true origin of parasites controlling Astro Toilet's bodies so that you wouldn't get infected by them in the same way poor Astro did. Okay guys, I warned you and now let's go. So the episode starts with something really weird right away. The POV crosses the watery part of the map and finds himself in the open area which looks like the Red Desert. And it seems like this location is somewhere nearby the city that was completely ruined in the previous episode. And in that moment, we can notice how one of Astro Toilets zooms out across the red skies as if he was patrolling the area or something like that. And it is possible that it is one of Astro Toilets we will destroy later, or maybe there are Astro Patrols controlling different parts of the areas that were occupied by their faction. And by the way, speaking of the connections to episode 76, the POV in today's episode is the same guy we could see on the second leak that Boom sent to stake yesterday. And it's the big cameraman with the blue lens who tried to protect the city from Astro Toilets, as well as let the survived but injured cameramen escape together with Mecha Scientist Cameraman. And this guy is also present in this episode. And to tell you even more, he somehow got even smarter than he already was and upgraded Camera Spider that he is operating with. So now he got the whole freaking mini bunker for himself on this camera spider, which made the process of traveling around much more comfortable for both of them, I bet. And I believe both of them now are on to another mission, which is either focused on finding the human survivors that they'll essentially manage to achieve in this episode, or getting the G-Squad, but we'll get to that later. And it seems like the POV investigates the area first, while Mecha Scientist is waiting for the further orders on his perfect battle machine, while staying concealed in the water like a true guerrilla fighter. And this detail really amused me considering that they are made of tech all around but still can be chilling underwater without any issues. I think they're being created by someone really smart, you know. And then I also got an impression that the big cameraman with the blue lens is something of a more importance than even an elite agent as he can order Mecha cameraman around, even though Mecha is one of the oldest members of the Alliance as a whole, like Plungerman. Lucky Cameraman and Camera Woman. And later in this episode, we'll also see how members of the G Squad would address him directly, as if his approval on the alliance between them is even more important for these Skibidi toilets than the approval of Mecha Cameraman, for example. So it is possible that the blue lensed cameraman is the leader of this elite squad whose goal is saving the survived humans, and apparently they're also pursuing a more important mission as well. And also, let's not forget that the blue lens on his camera face can be a direct reference to Titan Cameraman, and this guy can be somehow related to him. Or maybe the blue lens is just a mark that a certain cameraman is one of the most elite and trusted agents in the whole alliance, I don't really know. Because Camera Woman and Plunger Man also wore these lenses, and I doubt that they were connected to Titan Cameraman specifically. So maybe blue is just an iconic color of cameramen's race in general. Okay, and then the POV moves further while leaving Mecha Cameraman undercover. And he looks at the ruins of the city from episode 76 in front of him, while this really sad music also plays in the background. Astro Toilets did just an enormous amount of damage towards the innocent people that still managed to survive in this crazy world, and also to the whole parts of our planet. And they surely deserve to get punished for it. But you'll see later in this video how everything is actually not so easy, and it's going to get really crazy from there. And then just a moment after the POV hears a really strange sound that turns out to be the sound of church bells ringing. And if such a sound can be heard, then it means that someone nearby is also present here who'd pull the rope to do that. 
and usually ringing of church bells associates with asking for help so the POV must have understood immediately that there are some human survivors who are pleading for someone to come and rescue them right now. So he moves towards the church immediately. And in that moment, we see the moment from one of the leaks that Boom posted before this episode where the chair is moving on its own once again. And then this chair is getting caught in the light too, but it turns out that it wasn't stopped by this in the midair, but instead it keeps moving forward. And after the POV loses it under this pile of stones, the source of light ceases to exist as well. The POV activates his jetpack and flies across the whole map towards the church, then without paying much of an attention to what happens to this chair afterwards. But I don't share the same point of view, guys. So while he was zooming with the help of his jetpack, I checked out the background and noticed this tiny flash that occurred right here in this scene. And if you don't really know what it was, then hold tight in your seats because what I'm going to explain to you right now is actually crazy. So after the POV reaches the territory of the church, he quickly glimpses around but doesn't find anything suspicious. Well, at least that's what he must have thought. But I noticed some really suspicious silhouette near this tree where the fallen toilet tank also can be seen. And doesn't this thing remind you of anything? And well, if you said that it must be the secret agent or some other mysterious cameraman, then let me tell you it's wrong. And what I realized it is, in fact, is much crazier. So this is actually an ATM machine or some kind of old school phone box. And yeah, you heard me right. And it also happened in a way that this ATM machine appeared on this spot right after we saw the chair flying towards the same direction. So after a second, the chair disappears and an ATM machine appears on its place instead. Do you know what it reminds me of, guys? It makes me think of the game called Prop Hunt, where the player could basically take an appearance of any object in the game and he should hide somewhere and blend with the rest of the environment in order to not get noticed. And that got me thinking, what if these mysterious chairs we saw throughout the latest episodes of the series are actually capable of doing the same thing? And by that I mean that they are not even chairs, but the representatives of new secret race which is actually able to take an appearance of whatever object they want. So their special ability is mimicry, and they are working as the stealth warriors or something like that, who are just observing the battle between the Astro Faction, Skibidi Toilets, and the Alliance's forces. And by the way, did you also notice how the chair from this episode does not look like the chair from episode 76 at all? Because last time we saw the a wide-backed armchair, while this one looks more similar to the chair from episode 75, and it has the regular backrest. And it means that there are several different chairs, if we may call it like that, that are not chairs at all. And it also makes me think that the reveal of this new cool race is really close. And what Boom already tries to hint us about really makes my brains boil like a potato soup. But of course the POV doesn't have time to analyze it all and make certain conclusion out of what he just saw. Because a moment later he hears some heavy breathing. And as he turns around he sees another portion of human survivors. So it seems to me that Boom was playing his tricks again when he tried to convince us in one of his older interviews that humans won't really play an important role in the future series. Because here they are again and it seems like this is just one portion of survivors that were hiding in that church the bells were ringing from. And by the way, this woman in the back looks exactly like Siri from the game called Jedi The Fallen Order, so maybe Boom took multiple already existing gaming models for these humans. So when he turns to them, the woman who seems to be the leader of this survivor's squad pulls her weapon aside and says to us, Don't shoot! We're not enemy! And then she adds, I've seen likes of you helping other people. And I actually wonder what she meant by this. Did she refer to Camera Woman from the secret scene of full episode 73, where she found and saved the other group of survivors where one man was clearly infected with Skabidi virus? Or maybe there are other squads led by someone from the Alliance who searched the ruins of this city and other locations as well, while trying to find as many survived humans as possible. Because that would mean that there are much more people left in this world that we initially thought. But what's even more important is that the other portion of people clearly left inside the church, even despite the fact that it's being on fire and it's already not the safest place of all. And that's why when this woman asks the POV to get them somewhere to a safer place and he points to the church's entrance, she gasps and says, No! Can't you see the church is on fire? No. Can't you see? 
the church is on fire. So it's possible that this group of people that the POV has encountered was trying to find somewhere friendly and convince them to help, while the major part of survivors are still inside of this church. Because if there was no one else there, then how the heck are its bells still ringing? And that's why I believe there is still hope, even though this poor group of survivors gets eliminated by this disgusting astro toilet. And well, anyway, it really would be better for these poor souls to at least cover themselves in the burning church than to get demolished by this Astro's missiles, but what's done is done, you know? The POV barely manages to activate the shield on his hand, which he already used in the previous episode, by the way. But considering its actual size, this shield is not enough to protect the humans, too. Plus, he activated it just a second late at this point, and this delay turned out to be fatal. Plus, it also seems to me that the power of this Astro's missiles was so strong that the shield of our POV got turned off a couple of times, and that's why he needed to spend more time to get it activated again. And in the meantime, he also tries to fight this Astro back. And although he manages to achieve this goal in the end, the fight was still messy as hell. But what made it funnier, though, is that Boom actually kept his promise and edited the iconic stakes scream into the actual episode, and the meme fart sound was also there. And if you're not really familiar with this whole story regarding Stake's joke interview with Boom, then you can watch my previous video after you'll finish this analysis of episode 77 in order to learn what happened before its release, as it was really funny. Okay, but now let's continue. So what's also really important about this Astro Toilet after he got defeated by the POV is this hole in his toilet. Doesn't it look pretty suspicious to you guys? Because it doesn't look like a hole for a head's placement like in Skibidi Toilet's case, for example, where we could clearly see how they just had their heads that could be flushed inside the toilet. But it looks more like a special place for a parasite to be placed in and booted to the Astro system. And I'll explain more of it to you as you'll keep watching this video. And in any case, I'm just really happy that we're getting finally revealed more of the Astro Toilet's lore to us and it's turning out to be much crazier than I initially thought. So as the POV takes a look at the fallen Astro Toilets, he turns around and automatically shows the human survivors to follow him to the safe place. But it turns out that no member of this poor group survived this vicious attack, and instead we can only see their burning remains, which is really tragic. Humans are pretty damn fragile, huh? But still, let's not forget that the other group of survivors must be covered in that church as its bells are still ringing, so not everything is lost in this episode, my friends. And by the way, in that moment, we can actually see how this group of people got eliminated as there was another Astro that managed to make himself invincible and avoid the battle with the POV. So instead, he managed to sneakily attack those people while the POV was busy handling the other Astro toilet. So it must not really be the fault of POV's shield. And we can also see that it is the same Astro Toilet with the Yellow Sword who pulled such a trick with invincibility. And then he disappears again and the POV starts looking around in panic as the enemy was clearly approaching him in that moment, so that he could strike him from behind too. And thankfully, the POV managed to repel this Astro's attack at the very last moment and stay alive. His sense of intuition must be really good. And now we have an opportunity to look at this Astro Toilet much closer as he's not invincible anymore. And what really took me out when I looked at him is the melee weapon that he's got and its yellow color. Because spoiler alert, some members of the G-Squad also held the very similarly looking melee weapons that were glowing in yellow. So could there be some sign of relation among them? Or is it just a coincidence? I guess we'll figure it out for sure a little bit later. And what's also interesting about his equipment is how the complex cannon on his left arm is basically a bunch of smaller cannons we could see on the Astro Troop from episode 76, for example, who looked like a prototype to glitch Skibidi Toilet. Okay, and it seems like this Astro Toilet either stunned the POV with the shots from this cannon, or made him fall to the ground so he couldn't physically dodge his follow-up attack with the sword, so he had to cover himself with the shield instead. And then the POV finally gets up on his feet and uses his jetpack to maneuver between this Astro's attacks, but this success didn't last long though. And just in the moment when it could seem like there is no hope for the POV anymore, the help suddenly comes out of nowhere in a form of katana that was thrown at the Astro's face by our favorite Rizsaw Skibidi mutant. And by the way, it's also the same mutant that appeared in episodes 62 and 66. 
And it's kind of funny considering how he showed an inappropriate gesture to the big TV man in 66th episode, because here the POV is going to give G-Squad the same answer at first. But it's going to happen a bit later. But for now, the mutant punches right at the Astro's left arm and makes his cannon simply evaporate, which looked cool as hell. And what I also noticed is how his toilet got strengthened with metal, and he now uses the safety hat taken from the glitch Astro Troop from Episode 76, and it's not the only Astro-inspired upgrade that members of the G-Squad acquired for themselves. Rizsaw Mutant also uses the same exact gun that the female Skibidi Mutant stole from Astro Juggerson back in Episode 75, which even made me think that she could have been a part of G-Squad at some point somewhat off-screen, although it wasn't really confirmed in the series. But if it was her exactly, then it would also mean that she's an elite Skibidi soldier who's capable of tons of things in the battle. Okay, but I digressed here a little bit. And what also made me chuckle a bit is the fact that Rizsaw Mutant still wears the protective headphones above his new cool Astro helmet, even though Skibidi toilets don't fight with Speakerman a really long time already. So it is possible that some Skibidi use these earphones just to make their drip even more sick or just out of habit. And well, I can totally believe that Rizsaw guy treasures his drip the most, so everything is possible here. Although maybe some Skibidi toilets are aware that Elite TV Man still uses the power of speaker waves, for example, to stun his enemies, which we could see in the beginning of Episode 74. Okay, and then another member of G-Squad attacks Astro Toilet from behind while using his crescent blades, which are also glowing in yellow. And of course, this is the iconic police Skibidi mutant who we also saw on Boom's Leaks. And he also got buffed as hell in this episode, and he resembles one huge pile of protective armor and rocket launchers at first glance. And considering how all of these Skibidi's melee weapons are glowing in yellow, I can assume that they got them improved a lot, and now their melee toys can cause just an enormous amount of damage and slice through the Astro Toilet's armor like cheese. Or there is also a possibility that these weapons were enhanced with the power of either Astro Energy or Skibidi Energy. Because in one of the interviews, Boom mentioned how different races have different colors attached to their cores due to the different types of energy that they use in battles. And I definitely would like to know more about this whole energy stuff and what is its origin in Skibidi Toilet Universe. Okay, and after the police mutant slices the Astro Toilet's robotic hands and makes him look like a miserable chicken now, he then sets him on fire with evil laughter, and then the Jimbro mutant lands right behind this poor Astro and gets ready to perform a Mortal Kombat fatality combo on him. And Jesus Christ, this guy looks so much more gigantic than he seemed to be in Episode 73, for example. Guys, I still remember the times when Skibidi mutants looked like this. Where did all of this go wrong, huh? So he easily grabs this poor Astro freak and squeezes him like a lemon, although we can see blood instead of a lemon juice which proves the fact that Astro Toilets are not robotic, but are made of blood and flesh. And when the Jim Bro Mutant throws away the empty toilet tank while still holding the Astro's head, we can notice once again this weird placement inside of it that seemed to be made specifically for the parasites. Then the trio of mutants just stand in front of the POV feeling extremely proud about themselves, but the POV doesn't seem to share their good mood and draws his weapon. And to that the police mutant says, why bro is aiming at me? Is he stupid? Why bro is aiming at me? Is he stupid? And then Rizsaw Mutant adds while being extremely salty. We saved your life. We saved your life. And the gym bro seems to be the most chill out of them all, so he just says, Relax, we ain't here to hurt nobody. Relax. We ain't here to hurt nobody. And this is the reference to the hidden phrase from one of the leaks regarding this episode we saw earlier. So now, everything fits in one place. And then the gym bro comes closer to the POV and suggests that it's time for them to become friends. Time for us to become friends, official. And during that speech, he plays with his eyebrows like crazy. What's up with this flirt, bro? And by the way, in episode 71, G-Man flirted in the same way with Rizsaw Mutant. So I guess you guys have your own vibe inside of your community, English or Spanish, you know? And it seems to me that y'all are moving pretty actively. But I'm not really like you guys, I'm sorry. I have a speaker woman at home. So the POV declines this nice suggestion and just shows this very bad gesture right to the gym bro's face. Okay, but if we'll be serious here for just a moment, I found it really interesting how all of these mutants from G-Squad decided to convince the blue-lensed cameraman so eagerly, although they could have brushed him off already and found someone else from the Alliance to unite with. 
It really makes me think that our POV is not just an elite agent, but one of the high-ranked cameramen warriors. And it's really beneficial for Skibidi Toilets to have a successful negotiation with him, especially for the Skibidi from G-Man's squad specifically. Although it seems to me that after such a rude answer from the POV, the good vibes of Jimbro got cut short a little bit. So he takes his glasses off and says with the angry facial expression, We are not asking. We are not asking. By which he means that it was a direct order that he's intended to fulfill, and it probably came from G-Man himself. But before some other mass started, the Jimbro heard some suspicious noises in the air, and of course it's more Astro Toilets coming to our party. Which means that more meat to beat up is on the way, so of course the gym bro's mood got brightened again and he gets up on his feet and gets his astro cannons ready. And then, all of them, including the POV, are participating in this fight with two glitch astro troops and astro obliterator who are trying their best to oppose us. Well, I guess. But of course, none of them is a good match for us. Especially when the upgraded DJ Toilet arrives at the party and turns it into the rave. And he looked exactly as it was in the leaks yesterday before the episode's release, which I already analyzed in details, so let's not stop here to repeat myself. And then suddenly, Mecha Scientist Cameraman also arrives to help. It seems to me that he got pretty sick and tired of waiting for the POV to return, so he got out of the concealing waters himself eventually. Plus, how could he possibly resist that when such a crazy party is going on in here? Astro Obliterator looks really shocked to see the agents of the Alliance fighting together with Skibidi Toilets now, but that's just something that you has to reap after sowing, you know. You guys shouldn't act like a common threat to both parties so that they wouldn't get united to oppose you. And the upgraded Skibidi Michael Jackson shows up the last and beheads the terrifyingly looking Astro Toilet with his iconic hee-hee sound, while DJ Toilet still played his sick beat on the DJ panels. That scene really looked cathartic in the sense, wasn't it? And after that, we can see the separated head of the Astro Toilet coming right to our feet. Then Mecha Scientist lands his camera spider as well. But before the new allies manage to even greet one another as it's supposed to be, something really weird starts happening on our screen. And it's the separated head of the Astro Toilet that starts literally coming back to life, and we can see the legs of Head Crab Monster from Half-Life series under it. And man, this looks creepy as hell. Just take a closer look at this disgusting creature. It literally looks like it has another bloody mouth under the Astro Toilet mouth. And it also feels like the actual Astro's face is just an inanimate object that was actually put on this horrible living creature. No wonder how DJ stopped smiling simultaneously when it happened. This crap literally gave chills running down my spine. Especially when the head started yelling like crazy and tried attacking the POV. And in that moment, it looked like some awful alien creature possessed the head of this Astro. I mean, look at this alien isolation hell of a thing. It doesn't even look like a regular parasite we saw in the earlier episodes of this series, but something even more awful. But the gym bro wasn't that scared as the other guys, so he just takes this awful creature with his hand while still smiling and throws it right into another Astro glitch troop that was observing everything from the side. He kinda removed two birds with one stone with this, huh? And that ended the awkward atmosphere in this squad for sure as DJ starts smiling and beatboxing again. And even the POV decided to finally give this guy a thumbs up after everything that he just witnessed. So the gym bro laughs and says, let's go. Let's go. Feels kind of good, right? Well, yeah, that's a wholesome ending if we wouldn't think twice of that monstrosity we just saw. And I definitely have something so say about it as promised. So first of all, we saw a parasite, and these little disgusting guys used to be the creations of Skibidi Scientist in the earliest stage of the series, right? And Skibidi Scientist worked pretty hard on improving them and using them as a fighting tool against the Alliance's forces. The parasites didn't have any intellectual power to actually stand out on their own, and all they could do was just following their master's orders. But within some time, we saw a certain evolution in these parasites, at least in terms of their size, because the parasite that managed to affect Titan Speakerman was definitely larger than the regular parasites. And then at one point, the parasite suddenly disappeared from the series, and Astro Toilets appeared instead. Plus, I already talked how Skibidi Toilets and Astro Toilets definitely shared the same origin, and I couldn't classify them as separate species anymore. And that led me to one absolutely crazy thought. What if Astro Toilets are crazily evolved parasites 
that used to fight on the same side as Skibidi scientists. But then a discord happened between them, and Astro wanted to take revenge on Skibidi toilets for some terrible treason we still don't know much about. Or maybe these parasites weren't really made by Skibidi scientists in the first place. Maybe those parasites are alien creatures that were adapted by other forces on Earth in order to make terrible experiments that simply went out of control? And that's what could possibly cause the whole Skibidi virus outbreak. And to tell you honestly, guys, I have so many thoughts on my mind about this that I decided to make a separate video about parasites specifically to develop all of my crazy theories. And that was all for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, hit the like button below and also be sure to write a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube and Discord channels not to miss my upcoming crazy video about the true origin of Astro Toilets and Parasites as a whole. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!